o'clock. So thank you, Peter, for starting our recording and welcome. Welcome everyone to the Wednesday night oasis. My, my name is Reverend Sally Bartholomew and I am your host this evening. I'm also a licensed minister with the Centers for Spiritual Living and the secretary of the Oakland Center's Board of Trustees. So welcome to our midweek oasis Wednesday night service. So as you will get to experience tonight, Wednesday night is a place where we come together as a community to be spiritually refreshed between Sundays. Now, most Wednesday night services build upon the theme of the previous Sunday, sharing in what we like to call a satsang style, building off the science of mind principles and practices with the intention that these gatherings be informal, intimate, and interactive. So last Sunday, Reverend Mich Sunshine Michelle Coleman introduced ideas inspired by the talk title of vulnerability, seeing and being seen. And tonight we get a new speaker, Minister Wayne Clark, and he's gonna continue the exploration of this same topic. Now our annual theme for 2023 in the Centers for Spiritual Living is living out loud. And our monthly theme for April is the power of vulnerability. So welcome to the Wednesday night service. Now, if you are here for the very first time in our community, I invite you to navigate yourself back to the webpage because you may have gone there to get here, www.oaklandcsl.org. And I invite you to click on the I'm new icon. And when you do look in the lower left hand corner of that page where you can submit your email. Once you do that, you'll begin receiving the village newsletter once a week in your email inbox. Now this has all the information on what's happening at the center in the coming weeks. Okay. Before we get started this evening, I want to invite you to mute your audio. The Zoom recording always works best when everyone else's audio is on mute. Whether or not you mute your, mute your video, that's up to you, but the audio, please mute it. Because if you don't, the tech team in the back will. So stay tuned to the end of service to receive special and important announcements about what's going on at the center. All right, without further ado, I would like to pray us in this evening and then I will introduce our speaker. So I invite us all to simply close our eyes, allow our awareness to focus on our breath as I speak these words. Turning within, I recognize that there is only one universal power and presence. This one is that which creates and is creating everything, seen and unseen. This one power and presence is that which I call God, but it goes by many names. Allah, love, spirit, the divine, Whatever we call it, it is. God is and I am. Knowing that I am an individualized expression of it, as is each and every person on this call and beyond. I, Reverend Sally, speak my word this evening, blessing tonight's service. Blessing Minister Wayne Clark as he shares with us his ideas on this talk of seeing and being seen. I know that we are blessed with a tech team that fully supports this process. I know that we are fully blessed by the Oakland Center for Spiritual Living Senior Minister, Reverend Sunshine Michelle. And I know that we are fully blessed, blessed by this village of people that call the Oakland Center for Spiritual Living their spiritual home. Knowing we are blessed, I simply allow this word to be 
giving great thanks, I let it go. And please join me in saying, and so it is. So thank you. And let me introduce our speaker for this evening. Minister Wayne Clark is a native of Oakland, California. He experienced a lot of challenges and trauma growing up in Oakland. And in his early 30s, he committed to healing and restoring his life. He has now had the opportunity to speak all over the country and internationally. He is passionate about the possibility of healing and life restoration for all. He started Oakland Impact Center, with, which focuses on helping communities that find themselves in crisis. He considers himself to be a healer, and his biggest joy in life is being a father to his four children and, believe it or not, a grandfather to one. So, without further ado, I introduce Wayne Clark. Thank you so much, Reverend Sally, uh, for the amazing introduction, the amazing prayer. Um, thank you so much to this community. Um, you have been a beautiful part of my um, spiritual journey. Um, and so I'm truly thankful. Um, I thank Reverend Sunshine for the invitation um, to have this honor of speaking today. Um, in her email, she highlighted that she thought this would be a very good topic for me. And it is because um, in my journey, I have learned that vulnerability um, is such a superpower. Um, and I, in my own life, it is how I've gotten to the place that I am um, because I came to understand that um, I actually have a glory story as I call it. And I, I love to tell it and I can tell it with honor and compassion. Um, but it really all had to start with me having compassion and being honoring to myself. So with this topic of seeing and being seen, um, this is near and dear to me because I love the fact that we come and get to come together. But I'll give you a little insight before I go forward. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the seeing and being seen of ourselves. Many times we talk about seeing and being seen from the perspective of seeing and being seen by others. But I know in my journey, it is this work, as Reverend Sunshine called it on Sunday, Sunday, the inner workings of coming to a place where we can be seen and be in a place where we see ourselves. When I say ourselves, I'm, I'm talking about the different human experiences that we have throughout this journey called life. And so that is what I am I was led to talk about today because it is near and dear to my heart that me doing my inner work in the way I see and be seen by myself, and I say selves with an S because as I move forward into this teaching, you'll hear me talk about the selves, the selves, and I'll break that down some more and invite us into uh, uh, having time with the selves, but we all have these different human experiences that we have had since the womb up until now that I believe and I have experienced that when we invite the selves to be with one another in harmony and in community, then some powerful things can happen. But many times we stray away from that because many times we have certain parts of ourselves that we really don't even want to acknowledge. So my invitation today will be speaking from this topic of seeing and being seen by the selves. Um, I also want to stop and introduce myself a little bit more. Uh, I am from Oakland. I am very, very proud to be from this city. Um, but I have, I did um, struggle a lot in this city. And I can um, honestly say I was a part of the problem in this city for a long time. That is why I'm now passionate about being part of the solution. Um, I came to a place where I understood that the problems that I was causing 
And a lot of the things that I were doing, it was because I was doing, it was because I wasn't aware that there was other things possible to me. So now, and I feel like it's my duty in my 14 years of working on myself and healing with myself and transforming and restoring. You'll hear me use the word restoration, life restoration, more than you'll hear me use the word transformation. Let me tell you why. It was a few years ago that I heard somebody speaking and they said that I believe, and I've come to believe this and agree with this, that this whole journey of life is a journey of returning home to the authentic self. See, all of us came into this, into this creation as a divine being with a divine assignment. And so when we come to understand that we are divine beings, then we understand that it's always us returning to the authentic self. So when I realized that, I started to say, oh, it's not I'm transforming to anything. I'm actually restoring to what God created me to be in the first place, what I was before I ever even hit my mother's womb. There was a divine assignment on my life and that divine assignment never leaves because it is spirit. It's already set. And so therefore I speak from this word of restoration a lot more than you'll hear me speak from this word transformation. But when I started my restoration process, I committed myself to what I, a quote I always use as I travel and speak, I say, I'm just trying to be what I didn't see. That's my simple goal in life. There's a lot of things that I didn't see. I didn't see a man that was healthy with his emotions. I didn't see a man that was totally committed to being an amazing father to his children especially his girls, who he came to the understanding that he would have to become emotionally available and become good with his emotions to connect with these beautiful babies that God trusted me with. But then I realized that none of this can happen for anybody. I can't help anybody if I don't first help myself. Another thing that uh, really inspired me on my journey was as I started helping others and come alongside of helping many other people in the community, I started to see so much of the help not getting the help that they were offering. I'm gonna say that again, because this is near and dear to my heart, because I see so many, and I'm talking about social workers, I'm talking about pastors, I'm talking about ministers, I'm talking about parents. I started to see many of those who are the healers and the helpers not actually allowing themselves to be afforded the exact thing that they are gifting to the world. So when you hear me speak from this uh, idea of I am passionate about life restoration for all, this is where I'm coming from. I'm coming from a state of having experiences where I looked around and said, wait a minute, burnout is at an all time level for pastors, social workers, parents, mothers. What, what are we doing wrong here? And something clicked to me, it said, and I noticed that many of those of us who step onto the front line and do a lot of the helping do not um, actually get that and afford ourselves that same help. So when I started my journey, that was my commitment. Um, and my spiritual journey was the foundation of everything that was changed in my life. It, I started out in the traditional church um, and it was, I've only been um, in the New Thought teachings for the last two years, you may be surprised to hear. Uh, it was actually somebody that came to me after one of my teachings in the traditional church and they said, you teach like a New Thought teacher. I had never heard a New Thought in my life. I had never heard a science of mine in my life two years ago. But when this person shared this video with me, I tell you, I said right away, these are the people I've been looking for. This is my community. And since then, I've kind of been on this journey of coming home to this new thought community. So when I talk about being honored to be here, I am speaking from the bottom of my heart. I am so honored to be with you 
in speaking today. So thank you. I'll start by making this statement. I sit with you able to be totally vulnerable with you only because I sat with myself able to be totally vulnerable with I. I wanna say this again because this is my foundation statement. I sit with you, able to be totally vulnerable with you because I first sat with myself, able to be totally vulnerable with I. This statement is so important to me and it, it is reason why I start with it as my foundation. Because one of the things that I have, I have come to find out is when we talk about seeing and being seen, I see so many people talk about seeing and being seen by the outer world, which the outer world is those around us, right? But I don't see many people talking about seeing and being seen or creating spaces where we can see and be seen by the selves by the me, by the myself, and by the I. All of us are operating in different human experiences. There is always the divine us, and then there is the human experiences that we have accumulated along the way. And if we be honest, all of these accumulations have given us different identities. So when I talk about seeing and being seen, I think sometimes we stray away from revisiting some of the us's, maybe it's the I, maybe it's the me, maybe it's the myself, or if we wanna put it in, in time term, maybe it's the adolescent you that struggled with something, or maybe it's the adolescent, or it's the teenage me that did some things, or maybe it's the 21 year old me who did some things, or maybe it's the 30 year old me, but, but we have these different parts of us that sometime we don't revisit. And I think we miss an opportunity to allow our inner community to grow together, to heal together, because we refuse to revisit these inner parts of us. I am totally convinced that if we have in place intentional, practices of self-exploration, something I call I curiosity, which is simply me being totally curious about me, me being totally curious and open about the things that I think that I say that I do, I curiosity. And if we have practices in place where we are willing to always re-examine what we think about ourselves. I truly believe this is the key to having what I call the reimagined life. I believe every master teacher that we have ever taught, learned from invites us into living this reimagined life, this reimagined life that many of us just call living in authenticity. From every teaching that I have read with the most powerful spiritual books, with the most powerful master teachers, is actually an invitation for us to return home to our authentic self. It brought me to think, as I was thinking about this, why do all of the master teachers, all of the greatest teachings, invite us to live into being our most authentic self? And I think it's a pretty easy answer when we actually stop and think about it. What the invitation is, is it, it, the master teachers, those who went before us knew that we would live in a world that will offer us so many different identities, so many different experiences. They knew that we will be living in a world that will pull you away from your authentic self. And so they gave us these te teachings to always be pointing us back to our divinity. 
Because yes, we will have human experiences. That is our humanity. That is the path we must travel. But can we come to a place where we recognize that even though we're having the human experience, we're still divine beings? And I truly believe that is the work. Can you put up the first slide, please? Reverend Sunshine on Sunday said it. And she said, I, she, I, she's, I, I forget exactly how she said it, but she said, we must do our inner work so that we know who we are. Hope I'm getting that totally correct, but you get the point. She said, we must do our inner work so that we know who we are. If I can add to that, I would say, we must do our inner work so that we know who we came here to be. Authenticity. The authentic self, this is the invitation at all times for us to be able to step into our, div our divinity. Because at the end of the day, if we're going to do the inner work of seeing and being seen, it will get a little messy. And I think this is why we avoid it many times is because we actually don't want to come or revisit some of the pieces of us that we've kind of casted away. But today I'm inviting us to do the inner work of seeing and being seen and allowing the whole experience of you to be revisited. Listening to Reverend Sunshine on Sunday, she also said sometime we cower when we should stand in our power. I actually know for my living experience, my own living experience, it, 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 my, the magic only happened when I was willing to revisit some of the most messiest parts of my life and sit with these pieces, sit with these parts of me and ask the question, what are you here to teach me? How may I love you now? It is this, 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 this place that Reverend Sunshine talks about circles a lot. And I'll come to this in, in a minute, but, but, but the invitation I think is for us to have what I call the circle of the selves. The, I know this is a major practice for me and I'll tell you more about it, but the circle of the selves, this inner work, it, it could get messy. There will be tears, there will be anger, but there will be celebration. There will be restoration. I'm speaking from my lived experience. If I hadn't revisited some of those things, because what I come to believe is uh, uh, my favorite scripture in the Bible is Romans 8, 28. And it actually says all things work together for the good. Well, do we actually believe that all of our experience have something to teach us? I am a believer and I am a living experience that these things, all of the life, I would not be sitting in front of you if I hadn't done what I call redeeming my own story. And I couldn't do this in my humanity, so I had to tap into my spirituality. I had to, had to create a space where the divine being can meet all of my human experiences and that circle of selves is the most powerful experience and practice I have to this day. Now, I'm gonna ask a question here. What I've learned, what I've come to understand is we have some ways of thinking, because if we're going to do the, do, the, do the work, then we have to understand that there are certain parts of the work that we can't avoid. We have this statement that I think most of us here may know, and maybe you don't, but if you don't, the, and there's a statement that says, the truth shall set you free. The truth shall set you free. Now, you'll learn me enough to understand. I'm curious 
and I will challenge anything and ask questions about, is that really true? And the reason why I do this a lot, because I had to ask this about myself. It is where my healing came from. I had to ask and, and revisit and challenge some of the spaces in my life that I had told myself certain stories. And I had to ask this simple question that can be so powerful. Is this really true? I, I, I myself got very curious about this statement. The truth shall set you free. Because in my experience, I looked all around me and I seen so much abundance of truth but I didn't see so many people being set free by it. And so me being the curious eye that I am said, God, why is it that this seems to be such a powerful statement, but it doesn't seem to be applying to so many of the people around me. And I meditated on this, on this, on this, on this question for about a week, it's a couple of years ago. And here was the return answer that was so sweet to my ears. The answer was that no, my curious son, the truth will, will, cannot just set you free. It is intimacy with the truth that can set you free. I hope y'all still with me here. I hope y'all still with me. Intimacy with the truth can set you free. And I'm going somewhere. I'm leading up to this seeing and being seen. Intimacy with the truth shall set you free. Now, give, let me give you a little bit of some of the definitions I found when I looked up this word intimacy. I found a great word that said closeness. The other word that I love for the word intimacy, intimacy, friendship. And my favorite definition, deep understanding. So I, I pose the question, how many of us can say that we're intimate with the selves? Because if we're talking about seeing and being seen, the internal works of seeing and being seen, the way we must come to know ourselves if we're going to live into this authenticity, if we're going to live into our vulnerability, it, how many of us can say we have a closeness with the selves? How many of us can say we have a deep understanding about the worst part of us that may have existed in this human experience? How many of us can say we have a closeness? I know the answer and every time I ask in spaces, it's not many people that can say that I have a deep understanding of that season of my life. And so uh, one of the major truths, I am a big believer that we need to have truths to revisit in our lives because that we become intimate with. What truths are you intimate with? What truths that can set you free, are you intimate with? As I talked about earlier, I believe that in this seeing and being seen journey, there's always the seeing me of, the seeing of me living in my human experience and the seeing of me in all of my divinity at the same time. This is the hardest juggle, I must say. Because so many times we've told ourselves so many stories about who we are, what we are not, and we won't even revisit, are these things true? So I say we must have some practices that bring us into a place of true understanding that is totally from the divine, that is totally from spirit, that is totally from God. There needs to be intentional disciplines and needs to be intentional practices so that we can always return to the truth understanding. I have one truth that has been a, a, a mainstay for me that I'll share with you. And somebody, and it should be shared um, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the chat. And this truth goes like this. This is, this is, this is simple, but it's powerful for me. And I believe it could be powerful for you 
if you become intimate with it, if you get close to it, if you get a deep understanding. And here, here's what this truth says. It says, we are all divine beings that are always in perfection. While at the same time, we are also always having this human experience that, must, that we must go through. I'm gonna say it again and I'll explain it. We are all divine beings that are always in perfection. This is the key piece. This is the part, hard part for us to see and believe as our truth. While at the same time, we are also always having this human experience that we must go through. Our divineness is our divinity. It never changes. It hasn't changed from the time we hit our mother's womb. Our divinity is unchangeable. But it is these human experiences that we go through, that we must go through, that challenge us to believe our divinity. This is where the work come in. The work comes in. We, we are all very familiar with positive, powerful affirmations. But let me ask you, how many of you are familiar with courageous, compassionate conversations? I'm gonna ask it again. We seem to all be familiar with powerful, positive affirmations. I do them every day. If I can context it, the powerful positive affirmations is that that comes out of our mouth and we put out into the world. But the courageous, compassionate conversations that can happen with the selves is the major work that I have practiced. And I believe that if we practice, it will bring us into a place of seeing and being seen in a way that we can move into our authentic self in a higher way, more consistently. The goal of being our authentic selves is what has been ushered into us by all the master teachers. This is what I have come to understand. Where I have accomplished this most is in this place that I call the circle of the selves. Now I'll explain what the circle of the selves is because this is the place where the, where the action happens, where the seeing and the being seen is. This is the, 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 the place where all of the magic happens. The seeing and being seen of the circle of the selves is simply like this. It started out for me with one time I was in a training and the lady talked about having meditations with the different parts, different experiences of your life. She said, invite the you that you most don't want to revisit. And then bring the you that may be in an involved place and have them come into a meeting place. Reverend Sunshine talks about the circles all the time. All I'm talking about is the same kind of circles, but inside of our own selves. This has been the most powerful by far work that I have done. I remember the first time I did it. I had so much guilt and shame about my, uh, 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 my, my, my teenage years and the years of my 20s and maybe right up until my 30s because I, I, did, I made so many bad decisions. I harmed a lot of people and I had a lot of guilt and shame. And so here I had to bring the 21 year old me into my consciousness. And then there sat the 40 year old me. And the 21 year old me resisted. I, I don't want to visit with you. Leave, leave me alone. I, 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 I'm guilty. I'm shameful. I caused a lot of pain. And the 40 year old me was able to say, but I love you. You served us, you did the best you possibly could. You were living in survival mode. You didn't have a father. You didn't have a father figure. Your mother was sick. 
You had to grow up on your own. You actually played a part in me being who I am. I acknowledge that you did some things, but I affirm that I am you and we are doing some amazing things. And then I celebrated my 21 year old self for getting us to where we are now. In a bigger form, the most amazing time I've ever had is when there was five me's in the cir circle of the cells. There was the small me, y'all, the seven-year-old me. And then there was the 13-year-old me who, who, who was the first one to realize that we were poor. And I was going to school with clothes that weren't matching and didn't have food and started to feel shame, the 13-year-old me. So there was the seven-year-old me. There was the 13-year-old me. There was the 21-year-old me. There was the 30-year-old me. And there was the 40-year-old. And the most beautiful part about this seeing and being seen of the circle of the selves was there was the divine me hovering us all. I get emotional thinking about that day because there was no guilt. This is no guilt. In the circle of sales, there is no guilt. There is no shame. There is no, there is no, uh, no blame. This is where there's nothing but compassion and empathy. This is a practice that I invite us into when we talk about seeing and being seen. Can we make space for all of the selves to be in one place and we redeem our story? I tell you, I promise you, this practice is one of the most healing things I've ever and still ever do. Can we show the, show the slide, please? This slide captivated so much of what I believe about this practice. This slide says, compassion is not a relationship between the healer and the wounded. It's a relationship between equals. Oh, I love that. When I brought all of the selves to the circle, nobody was more powerful. The evolved me wasn't more powerful. We was all equal. Only when we know our darkness well. Can we be present with the darkness of others? You see, the 40-year-old me that was evolved knew my own darkness. So I knew that it was okay for those pieces of me that I called darkness to come in in a compassionate way. Compassion becomes real when we recognize our shared humanity. There's a possibility to be to be seen and see all of the selves in compassion and in a way of shared humanity. This is the most beautiful thing that I have to offer is this practice of bringing all of ourselves. Don't leave nothing out. Invite every piece of you in. I don't care what that, per what that part of you did, what part of you you tried to avoid. I dare you to bring them into the circle of selves and let it be compassion and empathy. Let it be shared humanity. Every time I go into this space, there's tears. And what I love, and it's so fun to me, is sometimes little Wayne that's seven may come with an attitude about something reminding me something that happened to him when I was seven and I don't even remember it. But in this space, I have been reminded of things that I never even realized happened in my life. That's another magic of this space. When the cells have a safe space, they will reveal to you things that you probably never even knew. That is what is beautiful about this circle of cells. That is what's masterful about this practice of sitting with the cells. Yes, it is powerful to see and be seen by the outer world, but I promise you, if you can do this and apply this in, a inner, in your inner works, it is one of the most powerful things you would ever do. Can we go to the next slide, please? Reverend Sunshine on Sunday sparked my imagination when she used this picture. And I mean, in church, I start writing down notes. She, she said, what do these beings have in common? 
Now, if I can flip it and use it in a metaphysical way and use it for our inner selves, do you have any thoughts that represent the bear? Maybe there's these big thoughts, scary thoughts. Maybe they come and they roar and they scare you and, and you try to stay away from them and then they hibernate and come back to scare you again. You have any thoughts like that? Hmm. Maybe you got some ladybug thoughts, the, the thoughts that show up in all of their little beauty, but they're, they're so small, they come and they go so quick and you really don't understand the purpose of that small thing. So you don't really get to grasp it or hold it. Maybe you have some ladybug thoughts. Or maybe you have some dragonfly thoughts. Dragonfly is actually one of my favorite insects because it the metamorphosis of the dragonfly, if you don't know, the dragonfly starts out underwater. The dragonfly is not even a flying being before it comes out of the water and you have to look it up yourself. But the metamorphosis of the dragonfly, maybe you have some metamorphosis thoughts that come to you only for them to die away because maybe the bear shows up and scares that thought when divine is showing you of your major metamorphosis. And then she brung in the alien, my favorite part. The alien, you got any alien thoughts? You got any thoughts that you totally stay away from? Matter of fact, you want no encounter. Matter of fact, sometimes you wonder, should they even exist? You have any alien thoughts? What would happen if we can bring all of these thoughts into that place of inner working and allow them to exist together? This is the seeing and being seen. Can you go to the next, the next slide, please? This is the seeing and being seen. Look what she said about the alien that just I just love. We've come to think of the alien as bad. They might not be. They might be our best friends if we let. I'm raising my hand telling you that some of my worst thoughts, when I allowed them to come into the space of, 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 of the collective community and I invited them in with compassion and empathy, here's what happened to some of the thoughts. One of them, I'm gonna share and I'm gonna be vulnerable with y'all. I didn't think I would do this, but I'm gonna be vulnerable because here we are. One of the thoughts I had was I would never have a good relationship because I was bad very, very bad to women. One of the alien thoughts that I had was I would never ever even say the word wife or husband. And I'm talking about seven to eight years ago, y'all. Not a long time. I said, I. this is what I said, y'all. I said, God, I know you're going to do amazing things with me. I can tell my life is transforming at a fast pace, but I totally trust and understand if you don't give me a wife because how bad I was in my past life with women. This was the limitation I had put on myself. And then when I started doing these practice of, practices of the circles of the selves, this was the last one I wanted to allow to visit. The thought of me possibly being a good husband, a good man, a good partner. And I'll tell you, when I invited this thought in, I wept like a baby because I realized the thought wasn't a divine thought. That was a thought of guilt. That was a thought of shame. It actually was a thought that was trying to protect me from feeling like I may be let down of what may be possible. Mm. Oh, we got some alien thoughts like that, that we may need to revisit. Because if we revisit, they might be our best friend if we let them. Now, yes, Reverend Sunshine, now I can honestly testify that the beautiful lady who is putting some of the things in the chat, Janae, is my beautiful partner. And I can confidently say, I know how to love this lady in the most beautiful way. And I am open for her to love me in the same. All of the magic happened, people, by me coming into a space 
of allowing the selves to be seen and to see them. And I'll add this last piece. There's also magic in the place when you allow some of the voices that have been screaming loud, that you have been avoiding, that I have been avoiding, when you allow them to actually be heard, not in judgment, not in guilt, but you invite them in with open arms saying, come in, I'm going to love you here. That's what had to happen when I invited that thought in that said, you will not, not be a good man. You will not be a good husband. I said, you can come sit at the table. You are not the power at the table anymore. I am operating in my divineness. So I wrap my arms around you and I squeeze you with compassion and love. I squeeze you until you evaporate away. And if you want to revisit, you can. But every time these alien thoughts that have run our lives so many times return, there's no condemnation. There's no fighting them. There's nothing but compassion and empathy because those thoughts come from somewhere. One of the most powerful questions you can ask when you are in the circle of selves is where did you originate it? Oh my goodness. Mm. If you are willing to sit and be vulnerable, you will be mind blown where some of these things that we have thought for so long come from. And they will point you right in a direction. They will point you right back to the time, to the moment when mama said the wrong thing or daddy said the wrong thing or the ex said the wrong thing or you said the wrong thing. It will point it out to you, but this can only happen when you allow space for the selves to be seen and to see. And this listening of the circle it has to be applied for our inner selves. So I leave you today with this last piece. Before you've done this work, you just heard me sim you just heard me say, but I put the words to it. I have a major practice, and I said what I do. I acknowledge, I affirm, and I celebrate. A A C. This is a practice that I do. I acknowledge the thing happened. I do this right now if I mess up. If I have a mess up, if I have a falter, if I, I acknowledge I did that. Yes, I did it. I am not it that I did. You do not get to give me an identity no more. I affirm that I am doing better now because I know. I affirm the way I am moving forward in my power. And then I actually celebrate as I have overcome that thing in all power. This is one of the major practices that we can do. And I actually do this with those alien thoughts that show up, that come from somewhere. They come from somewhere. They have an, or they have an origin. They actually served us for, for a while. Why wouldn't we invite them in with open arms and say, Show me your origination. Normally the origination, the original showing up of that thing will invite you into understanding why the thing came. And then you can wrap your arms, your spiritual arms around this thing and say, yeah, I, I acknowledge you. I affirm that we have grown from that and I celebrate us for doing it. This is my teaching for today about seeing and being seen. I know it has blessed me and I hope my invitations to the practices that I have is a blessing to some of you. It has truly been a blessing to uh, speak this Wednesday and I am so honored to continue to grow and can continue to get to know this community. Thank you and blessings to you all. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Minister Wayne Clark. I want us all to please show our appreciation for Wayne's heart.
talk this evening. I know I tried to capture a bunch of it in the chat. I invite you to save the chat so that you can work with his questions with and for yourself later on. Um, I can see by the time that, oh my goodness, we have been spiritually fed and refreshed this evening. Please let Wayne see your responses. Um, maybe give him some love this way, give him yeah. some love with the reaction buttons. This is fabulous. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We will have some time um, after we close the recording and after service. Wayne, if you could stay around a little bit for the chatting after service, I think that would be fabulous. So I will, this is as Constance has said in the chat, this is so powerful. I don't even know where to begin. So <laughs> circle of the selves. Let's just start with that right there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I'm going to move us into the announcements because we do have some announcements this evening. And then, as I said, I invite everyone to stay for a little while after service because I know there could be some questions. All right, let me get my information up here. So next Sunday is April 30th and Reverend Sunshine Michelle will be speaking on power and possibility. The meditation starts at 10 a.m. and the service itself begins at 10.30 a.m. Next Wednesday, we have returning to speak with us again, Rev. Deb Hammond. She will be following up from Sunday's conversation on power and possibility. Meditation on Zoom begins at 6.30 and the service itself begins at 7. This Friday, mark your calendars, make sure you know where the link is. April 28th at 7 p.m., the Diversity Circle will continue the discussion started back in February of the Four Pivots by Dr. Sean Ginwright. Now, this discussion will be facilitated by Emeritus Practitioner Carmen West Jefferson, Deborah Jackson, and Crystal Fry. This is a Zoom event. Love offering is very appreciated. And you can go to the website, go to the group um, drop down, and you can find the link there. All right. So sign up for the next listening circle with Reverend Sunshine Michelle on May 7th. It'll be after service starting at 1245 p.m. Now, if you want to come to the service and then just stay at the center until the listening circle starts, you can order your box lunch when you sign up. You have to go to the events page, click the link there. This will also be a hybrid event. So if you are watching us on YouTube Live or Facebook Live, you can sign up for the event and get the Zoom information from the events page. Next. The education calendar for spring is now available. We have one certified class, a workshop, and two study groups that you can find out about. I'm going to just list the names of them. There's not enough time really to go into the details, but we have a study group. I'll be facilitating exploring Aramaic teachings of Jesus. We have another study group that Reverend Ike Param and Congregant Tom Rose will be facilitating, and that's going through the Living the Science of Mind book study. We have the Five Gifts of Abundant Life certified class that Reverend Jerry Carter will be um, starting, and that'll be on Thursdays. And then Cosmonaut Consciousness. Remember when Freddie Lambright came in and he gave his, I believe it was a Sunday talk, that he shared with us and he shared this idea. Well, he's going to continue from that talk, offering a workshop. So there is so much going on at the center. And I invite you <clears throat> to navigate yourself to the website, www.oaklandcsl.org. Look on the classes drop down list and you'll find out more information for each of these classes in that area. So going to the next slide, did you know 
that our very own Reverend Sunshine Michelle, she wrote an article in, it got published in the May Science of Mind magazine. And not only that, but all of the talks for May, she wrote the talk outlines for. So we are very blessed to have Reverend Sunshine Michelle within our community here at the Oakland Center, as well as our community in the greater CSL community. And I invite you to go to the bookstore, get your copy of your own Science of Mind magazine before they sell out. So I have another piece of information that I'd like to share with you before I talk about the contacts here on the slide. Um, I want to let you know that the power of three is going to be demonstrated here in the Wednesday night service. And I love the way that Minister Wayne Clark talked about the fact that those who help often don't get enough help. Well, we are demonstrating with the power of three that when we work together, we can support each other. What am I talking about? Well, going forward, there will be three of us who will be the main hosts for the Wednesday night service. It'll be myself, Paul Persuti. Yes, he's coming back for certain Wednesday nights and Maureen French, our board of trustees president. So we will be demonstrating how to support each other as volunteers with these rotating roles and Reverend Sunshine Michelle will be stepping in on the fifth Wednesdays to serve as host as well. So come enjoy the services with each of us. So as always, when we move into the contact slide there, any information that you want about the Oakland Center, visit the website www.oaklandcsl.org or you can reach out directly to any one of these individuals, and I'm sure that they will be happy to help. So that's all the announcements for this evening. Looks like I'm getting it in under the wire here. And now what we would like to do is move into our joyous giving time, our time of offering. Now we have been gifted with a fabulous talk this evening. And I know that as you search your heart, you will want to receive and give as well. So I invite you to say this giving affirmation with me. This gift I give is God in action. It does good work in the world and it blesses creation. So we have five ways that you can give financially to the center. You can donate by credit card, by mail, by Zelle, by text, or by the offering basket at a Sunday service. So that's all my announcements. And now what I would love to say is thank you. Thank you to the tech team that is behind the scenes helping to support all of this. Peter Gum with the slide presentation, Alice Herndon with the spotlighting, myself and Constance Chapman with the muting of individuals and Reverend Sunshine Michelle supporting all of this and helping us pull it together. And especially our speaker this evening, Minister Wayne Clark. So as we come to a close this evening, I invite us to all turn within as I take us out in prayer. So as we allow our eyes to close, our minds and our hearts to open, we give thanks. We give thanks to recognize that that divine inner being is fully present right here, right now, ever and always. We give thanks to know that each and every part of our human experience and expression is also within this divine. All of ourselves are divine and we give thanks. I am so grateful for this evening and all the information shared. I know that as we go about our ways from this place forward, that we are blessed. 
divinely guided, guarded, and uplifted. And so it is. Amen.